Hello everyone, welcome to a new video from Techosa. The chances are your pictures might have been taken a thousands of times by your parents. This is because taking pictures is so easy now. But this wasn't the case a couple of decades ago. In this video, we will go back in time and see the earliest type of cameras and finally we will learn how modern day camera works and also we will learn about multiple camera systems in smartphone. So without a further ado, let's get into the video. a device used to capture images. In ancient time, our ancestors used to portray images by means of stone carving and paintings. Later on, a phenomenon called pinhole effect was found from which the idea of pinhole camera was evolved. A pinhole camera is a simple camera without a lens but with a tiny hole or aperture on it. It is effectively a light proof box with a tiny hole on one side of it. Light from a scene passes through the aperture and projects an inverted image on the opposite side of the box, which is known as the camera obscura effect. You can try making a pinhole camera with the help of a video in the description box. The main drawback of pinhole camera was that it couldn't capture the imaged form. So based on the idea from pinhole effect, inventors started experiments to capture the imaged form. Hence. Film cameras was introduced in the beginning of 18th century. A photofilm was invented which had a chemical coating that react to the light. So when the film was placed on the opposite side of the hole, an image would be permanently formed on the film. As we learned in the earlier video, light travels in a straight line. So an array of lenses were used to converge light and produce a sharpened image of the scene onto the film. Thus, light energy was converted to chemical energy on the film. The image formed on the film was printed on a photo paper inside a dark room using some chemical methods. Thus, permanent photographs were created and camera came into existence. Back then, films were only capable of capturing black and white photographs. During the beginning of 20th century, color film and color photographs became popular. Later, we saw an introduction of digital cameras to our evolving world. By the beginning of 21st century, more and more people started using digital cameras. The main disadvantages with film cameras were that we cannot see the picture instantly and we have to buy more and more film rolls to capture more images. Nowadays, only digital cameras are used. Digital cameras are available in our market in different rates and in different types. But what do we use to quickly click a picture? A smartphone camera. Now let's look at the working of a smartphone camera or more precisely a digital camera. A smartphone camera has a set of lenses with a small mechanism that allows the camera to change its focus and a sensor that capture the image. When you open the camera app, the image sensor will be turned on. Light from the scene will be converged by the camera lens and it will fall on the image sensor. The size of the lens is the aperture. The larger the lens, the larger the aperture and more light will enter the lens which will result in a brighter image. The shutter determines how long the light will be captured. Remember that smartphone uses a digital shutter. The image sensor is a photodiode which means that it converts light energy to electrical energy. These electrical signals are taken by the image signal processor. And the image signal processor is a part that processes the electrical signals from the image sensor and feed it into the smartphone display. Let's summarize. The smartphone camera works in six main steps. First one, the user or the smartphone itself focuses the lens. Second one, the light enters the lens. Third one, the aperture determines the amount of light that reaches the sensor. Fourth one, the shutter determines how long the sensor should be exposed to light. The fifth one, the shutter captures the image. And the sixth one, the hardware will process and record the image. Now let's look at multiple camera system. Nowadays, most smartphone comes with a multiple rear camera which serves us with different purposes. Let's look at these different types. Wide lens. Wide lens is the main camera of a smartphone. It is usually the highest quality camera module. Portrait lens. 
Portrait links act as a depth sensor that separate the subject from the background while taking a portrait photo. Ultra wide lens. Ultra wide lens is used to capture a wider field of view. It is useful when you want to take a dramatic wide shot of a scenery. Macro lens. Macro lens is used to capture close up objects. You can use it to capture small objects. Telephoto lens. Telephoto lens is used to capture objects that are too far. Usually, telephoto lens captures two times or three times zoomed shots. You can use telephoto lens to capture portrait pictures of people. Now, let's learn about something that comes in our mind when we think of a camera. It is megapixel. The light sensor consists of a millions of individual pixels that captures the light. The higher the number of the pixel, more amount of light will enter the sensor and greater will be the image quality. If a sensor has 1 million pixel, it means that it is a 1 megapixel sensor. Nowadays, smartphones are available with 48 megapixels, 64 megapixels and even 108 megapixel cameras. Does that mean that a 64 megapixel smartphone camera outperforms a 24 megapixel DSLR camera? The answer is no. This is because even though the number of pixels in a smartphone image sensor is higher, the overall sensor size is very small when compared to a DSLR camera sensor. This means that the individual pixel size is very small and so only a small amount of light can enter the sensor. Then why does the smartphone manufacturers provide us with high megapixel camera? High megapixel cameras like 48 megapixels, 64 megapixels and 108 megapixel cameras provides more details than a 12 megapixel sensor. But actually, the quality of an image from a smartphone depends upon the following. The quality of the sensor, sensor size, the quality of the lens, size of the lens and most importantly, the image processing software. So that's it for today. Hope you all understood today's session. If you have any doubts and queries regarding this session, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye bye.